Hello everyone. Welcome to the seventh episode of this deep learning with PyTorch series. So this video we will go through how to how do we implement uh, logistic regression from scratch with the help of NumPy only. Uh, OK, so let's get started. So if you if you have gone through my last video, you will know that in logistic regression we are uh, at first we are doing the operations which we are doing similar to linear regression like we are doing a w transpose x plus b then to squash the output within the range of 0 to 1 as we need to have the output within the range of 0 to 1 or 0 to 1 as output like either probability or 0 to 1 right either of these two you, we need to have as an output from the logistic regression so what we will do is we will pass this linear part, which is nothing but Z to a sigmoid activation function, right? And that sigmoid activation function based on the values of Z, if the Z values are quite large, it will output the values which are very close to one. And if the Z values are like large negative numbers or very uh, small, uh, small in nature, then uh, you will get the sigmoid activation function output as very close to zero. And then what we do is we calculate the actual value with the predicted value and uh, we kind of do a gradient descent and uh, to optimize the model parameters, right? So the model parameters here also same as uh, linear regression like W and uh, B. And uh, if we take the derivatives of this loss function with respect to each of these parameters, we will this, get these two equations, right? Right, dw and db, right? So using these two equations, we will do the optimization inside this code. So this code will be very much similar to linear regression from scratch implementation, uh, but few of the things which are like new, I will mention that explicitly in this uh, video. So one of them is like the sigma activation function, right? So which we also talked about in our last uh, discussion. So the sigma activation function will take that this linear part, which is Z, and it will output the value within the range of zero to one, right? And then we, uh, at first, what we will do is we will implement a class, which is the name of this class is logistic regression. Here we have the regular init method where we have uh, like the linear, the learning rate initialized with a default value. And also we have the number of iterations for gradient descent, right? So we kind of initialize those initial values like learning rate, number of iteration, weights and biases we are initializing with none. But inside this fit function, which takes in the X train and Y train, and uh, we kind of get the number of features and the number of rows uh, from this uh, X train. And based on that, we are initializing the weights, right? So I'm initializing the weights as zero values and the the shape of this would depend on the number of features we have in our data set right so the number of features uh, that are there that many number of weights we will have and bias we can straight away initialize with zero as we will have only one bias across this network right then we will start doing the gradient descent. So at first we will do the linear prediction or the linear calculations, which is uh, this Z, which will do the W transpose X plus B. And uh, first, uh, like we are doing a dot product between the X uh, and the weights, right? So here the uh, uh, I have written in such a way that the inner dimensions of my X train and weights are matching. That's why we do not to do a uh, transpose here. Otherwise, if the uh, dimensions are not matching, you need to do a uh, transpose of this, right? Then we add the bias to it. And once we get the linear prediction, we pass it through a sigmoid activation layer, right? Which will give us the Y pred or the Y prediction. Uh, after that, using this formulas, which we derived in our last session, like DW and DB, like DW is nothing but X multiplied by A minus Y. A is nothing but Y pred. Right, so that's what we are doing here um, in this step. This is DW I am calculating, so we are doing it across all the training examples. So uh, that's why you see, uh, like we also divide the calculations by number of samples, and this dot product we are doing with x uh, x train dot transpose just to match the inner dimension with 
this a minus y, right? So a is nothing but uh, y pred, right? So uh, let me write it down. So a pred is equals to uh, sorry, y pred is equals to a, right? So we are doing y pred minus y train, and then uh, the calculation of the dw is over. Then we will do the similar thing for dw. Uh, sorry, db, and we are uh, doing a difference between y pred and y train, and we are doing a sum because we are doing it across all the training examples of my data set, right? So uh, as there are multiple training examples, so we have to calculate the difference of these two for each of the training examples, and in the end, we need to sum that to get the value of db, and we also divide this value with the number of samples. Then we do the gradient descent step, uh, the weight optimization step. So this is like the previous iteration value, and we kind of, uh, after taking the derivative, we multiply with learning rate, and we update the value of weight and bias, right? So we get a new set of weights and bias, and we this goes on till uh, the number of iterations which we have defined or passed in this uh, while calling while creating an object of this class. Right. So once that iterations is done, so then my weights are kind of optimized weights, which will make the prediction as close as possible to the actual value. Then once this implementation of fit function is done, then we will implement the predict function. So predict function using uh, the weights and biases, we will at first do this linear part, which is W transpose X plus B. So once we have that linear part, then we pass it through a sigmoid activation layer, right? The so sigmoid activation layer will give you the probability, which will be within the range of uh, zero to one. And once we get the Y probs or Y probabilities, then we have to using a threshold, we need to convert those probabilities to binary classification, right? Either zero or one. So what in this list comprehension, what I am doing is for every prediction, I am checking if the value is kind of greater than 0 0.5 equal and greater than 0 0.5 or not. If it is greater or equal to 0 0.5, I am uh, converting that probability to one, else I am con uh, keeping the probability as zero, right? So this is the prediction. So we are converting the probabilities to predictions, right? So the probabilities are within the range of zero to one and the predictions are either zero or one, right? And then we are kind of returning that prediction from this function. Okay, now let's create a data set. So this breast cancer data set I am loading from scikit-learn scikit data set. So this is about like a patient uh, features which we have, patient diagnostics and features we have as X variables and the Y variable. Uh, uh, it is kind of giving you whether that patient has breast cancer or not. Zero or one kind of uh, label we have. So we are doing a trend test split. Then we are creating a classifier from this logistic regression class and using the train data set. Uh, we are convert, we are like training the model. Once the model is trained, we are doing the prediction on the test data set, right? And after that, using this prediction, uh, we need to check the accuracy of uh, accuracy of the model on the test data set, right? So this accuracy is nothing but the measure out of hundred predictions. What per, what percentage of them are correct, or what percentage or what are the number of prediction out of hundred are correct? Right, so here we are getting a, a accuracy of 0.85. That means 85% predictions are correct for using this very basic of logistic regression. Right, so yeah, that's all I have for this video. I hope you understand. So the the trick is only to use a sigmoid activation function and then convert those probabilities to a binary output, which is like zero to one using these two steps. Otherwise, things are very much similar to what we did in case of uh, linear regression also, right? So yeah, this is like kind of a seventh video on this series, and we are yet to start on the neural network side, right? But I just wanted to build the groundwork and build the base through which you will get to know the mathematics behind these two algorithms, which will uh, give you a more detailed idea when we go through the deep learning 
related or the neural network related tutorials, right? So yeah, uh, so from the next uh, video, we will start with uh, how the neural networks works and how we can move from logistic regression to neural network. Yeah, thanks for your time. Thanks for watching.